Hey guys, this week on Victor Bates Science we're looking at caramel and to get to understand this sweet sticky goodness a little bit better I'm going to be making a few of these delicious creme brulees. But I'm not going to lie to you guys, as much as I want to learn more about caramel and as much as I've wanted to do a creme brulee for quite some time, really this is all about getting my hands on a kitchen blowtorch. Blowtorch. Unfortunately, this baby is a little too enthusiastic for the experiment we have in mind. So, put it away for now and get back to the sweet stuff. The first thing you need to do to make a creme brulee is to heat cream and vanilla until it's almost boiling. Yay! And then we whisk together some egg yolks and sugar, add the hot cream, and whisk it all together. Then we just have to strain the mixture into some individual ramekins, put them in a tray of boiling water, and these guys are ready for the oven. Of course, creme brulee is really just something pretty, and delicious, and pretty delicious, for our experiment to sit on. The caramelization part is simply putting some sugar on top and heating it up. One of the really interesting things about caramelization is that it happens at different temperatures depending on what type of sugar you use. So today, I've got two different types of sugar, and we're going to be putting them on top of our creme brulee to see which one caramelizes first. But before we can do that, what's actually happening to the sugar in caramelization? When we talk about sugar, we're normally talking about sucrose. Now, sucrose is made up of two parts called glucose and fructose, and the very first thing that has to happen for caramelization to take place is we have to split them up. But the breakdown doesn't stop there. Both glucose and fructose can continue to split up, making smaller compounds like furans, maltol, ethyl acetate, and other things that we really don't need to remember. All we need to remember is that, unlike sugar, they smell. But, you know, this is where the flavor of caramel comes from, so really it's more of an aroma than a smell. And, funnily enough, that's what they call aroma compounds. The other thing that can happen is that the sugars can form oligomers. An oligomer is an unnecessarily complicated word for a bunch of little bits joined together. If you've heard of polymers before, it's a lot like that, just instead of theoretically going on forever, these chains stop after a certain number of bits join up. So, the sugar oligomerization is where a lot of the colour and texture of caramel comes from. However, chemists still don't really understand all of the reactions that are going on here. One thing that they do understand pretty well, however, is that sucrose and glucose have a different caramelization temperature to fructose. So for our experiment, we're putting the sucrose on the left and the fructose on the right. Then we're going to put it under the grill at a temperature between the two caramelization points and see what happens. While it may not look as pretty as a blowtorched version, you can see that the fructose on the right has started to caramelize before the sucrose on the left, which makes sense as fructose's structure makes it more likely to react. Even clearer is this shot from halfway through the experiment, when all the fructose had already melted and the sucrose is just sitting there being lazy. Final fact! Caramelization is a pyrolysis reaction, which comes from the Greek words for separating, lysis, and fire. Pyro. That's all we have time for today because, well, I really have to go eat this. But be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next installment. A little birdie told me that we're going to be having a race. A cake race. See you then.